<clears throat> oh, hey, gang, it's Kevin Strange coming back at you again uh, from uh, old South Strangeville and uh, coming at you pretty late in the uh, in the afternoon on um, what is today, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, uh, December 3rd, um, day three of our uh, Sarsaparilla and Rocco uh Rocco and Sarsaparilla's Sickness Time Story comic book creation. I told you guys I was going to come at you every day, uh, bring you along with me on this journey as I create a brand new one-shot 30-page black and white comic book from scratch in the month of December and release it to you, gang, for free by Christmas. In order to pull that off, I got to get a lot of pages done every single day. And I come in here, come here live talking to you heads uh, to keep me accountable and make sure that I'm uh, trucking along. So when we last spoke, I had finished the first eight pages of the uh, comic in the pencil, 11 by 17 pencil um, phase, stage, and uh, was preparing to um, rough, rough out and lay out the next 11 pages or the entirety of scene two. It's only a three three scene comic book. It's a uh, it's a one shot quickie. The entire story wraps up in a single issue, uh, and only thirty pages. That's um, eight page scene one, eleven scene page two, and ten page scene three. So the, the big scene, scene two, the middle of the story. Um, I needed to lay out eleven pages yesterday. I didn't assign myself any um, hard pencils or detailed pencil work yesterday. I just wanted to get through all 11 uh, pages of the layouts. How did I do? Well, let's see. Let's see how I did. <clears throat> here's, the, uh, here's the 11 by 17 finished pages from scene one. I was waiting on a call from my doctor today. A call back from my doctor today before I got on to do the stream updating day three, uh, but I haven't gotten that call back yet. So I promise you, I, I promise you, we're going to get that phone call over live. Um, anyway, so we've got scene, uh, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six. Page seven, page eight gets us to the end of scene one, and I needed to do at least um, the layouts for 11 pages for scene number two yesterday. What did I get done? Well, as you can see, we've already got the hard pencils done. So what I was able to do is I got all 11 pages laid out relatively early yesterday. I actually got um, I, I actually got the uh, the pages laid out by about. 5 30 6 o'clock last night and i had the whole evening to um work through some pencil page some hard pencil pages so i actually was able to get through three hard pencil pages uh last night there's the doctor i told you i told you we were going to get this call Okie dokie, gang. Sorry about that. I uh, muted you guys while uh, while I took that call. I mean, literally, we've been on the 
the fucking air for five minutes, and I get that phone call. I've been waiting for it all day. Um, all right, so. <clears throat> Where was I? Oh, yes. I was able to knock out all 11 of those um, process pages, layouts, by about 5.36 o'clock yesterday, which gave me all evening to work and get uh, get uh, even further ahead of where I wanted to be. And so I was able to get uh, page number nine. The first scene of page one shows us uh, downtown uh, South Strangeville, also known as the Crack District. And we've got some, uh, some bums down here that are uh, upset with the uh, upset with the, the price hike of uh, of the crack here in in the crack district, and then we have the uh, the homeless crack dealer here um, trying to explain to his customers why the price of crack uh, had to go up so high. Uh, so we were able to get um, to get page nine, page ten. Page eleven, where Rocco warps in from the uh, from Chris, the Christmas World dimension uh, into, unfortunately for the uh, crack dealer, uh, directly into the crack dealer's body. Uh, that's that's three, three pages. And here is a uh, a fourth page. We were able to get done. Um, And a fifth page, and I did the fourth and fifth page today, so uh, so I got three three. Uh, I got all all eleven of the pages for scene two laid out last night, and then I got uh, I was able to get three additional um, hard pencil pages done, and then today I already I've done two uh, two more, um, which isn't a lot for today, but I'm gonna boogie through um, here through the night and uh, and try to get some more done. But honestly, I only needed to get, I only need to get one more page done and I've got my minimum of five pages done today. So we are uh, officially um, right on track and it looks like we're gonna get ahead of the minimum of five pages uh, per day. Uh, which is good because you wanna, you wanna pad yourself a little bit, try to pad yourself beyond the minimum um, in case things come up. Like I had this situation with my doctor I had to deal with today, um, which slowed me down a little bit. And I've got a page, what page is it? I got page 14 uh, queued up, ready to draw on the stream. So we've got the layout done. It's a nice one, two, three, four, four panel um, page. And the uh, the crackheads are um, the crackheads are going to try to convince uh, Rocco Minion to smoke uh, to smoke crack. Probably not gonna. Probably not a good idea. Probably not the best idea. We're gonna do this um, page on uh, camera, and then I'll do the next one. The next, however many I get done tonight off camera, but we'll hang out for a bit. And uh, jump on in the comment, hit the like button. Um, whether you're watching this live or uh, watching this after the fact, um, hit that like button and drop a comment in. If you're a, if you're a live viewer, drop a comment in and we'll talk. Uh, I'll answer any of your questions or chit chat about whatever you want to talk about. Live and uh, anybody who comes in after the fact and drops a comment in, I'll answer those comments offline. Okay. I like this scene a lot. The scene cracks me up and it allows me to uh, add some more, uh, some new. Um, character development for the Rocco uh, minion character. Uh, he's been around since uh, Nixon and Hogan Smoke Christmas, the Christmas movie that I made in 2010. So he's been around for 10 years. Um, I haven't fucked with him in a long time. 
but he's in the um, he's in the uh, Strange Will Smokeweed the card game, and I don't know if it was before. I think it was before I started working on the card game. I uh, I came up with this little mini, this little one shot comic idea, a little short comic idea for um, a Rocco and Sarsaparilla. Um, adventure and uh, it's just been sitting there on my hard drive as a title and a very um, very brief synopsis not a lot of information uh, to it at all um, let me get my bums here and see what they're it's all these these three uh, little dots are the bums Back of the bum's heads. Um, let's turn this way. They look like this. Um, so as it got closer to Christmas, I was, what was I doing? I went, I went into my folder of, um, comic book scripts. Cause I had written, I had written a, a, a real brief quickie comic uh, that I planned to draw in black and white and print here at home and use as a uh, as a promotional comic. And so I, I've been writing on that. I finished writing it. And then uh, when I was done writing it, I was going to draw it as soon as I uh, finished up Cockhammer Lives, the graphic novel, which is done now. So I was going back into the, uh, into the comic folder to take a look at, at that. Um, it's called Nixon and Hogan Hate Comics. And I was going to look at that. And uh, get to work on it, and that's when I, I scrolled through. My scripts, I saw that uh, Rocco and Sarsaparilla script and I was like, you know, it's it's nothing but a little it was nothing but a little synopsis. There wasn't much of a script to it. And that got a little, uh,
little light bulb going off in my head. Hippie and Christmas time and all. I was like, damn. If I really tried. <laughs> I bet I could get that done in time for Christmas. I am really bad at profile faces. I mean, really bad at profile faces, but um. Trudging through, trying my best. I can only do my best. Try to get a little bit better than the last time I did. So last week I cranked out the script. I already had a, a rough idea, you know. Of what I wanted the story to consist of, or at least I knew a couple of a couple of things I wanted to happen. And so I just cranked out a a quickie script last week and I uh, nailed in the the thumbnails in a couple of days after doing a after doing a, a fucking 150 page graphic novel like Cockhammer Lives, laying out 30 pages of shit. It's like a fucking quarter of of the size, uh, you know, of a of a graphic novel. So this this project here doesn't. Uh, Doesn't intimidate me in the least. If you're watching live, uh, throw a comment in, and uh, we'll answer your uh, answer your questions, chit chat, whatever you want to talk about. We'll talk about it. Hit that like button for sure. There we go. Yeah, it was super easy to knock that uh, knock the script out. And those thumbnails weren't weren't too tough either. And I think we're going to do uh I think we're gonna do pretty good this month. I think this thing is gonna be done a lot quicker than I anticipated, or you know, my my worst case scenario anticipation. For what I thought I might be capable of. It's really cool. I'm really happy to get another uh, another Strangeville story, even though it's you know short.
it'll be a great addition to the uh, Strangeville canon of stories. It's ridiculous and uh, offensive and violent and uh, fits right in with the rest of the Strangeville stories. And uh, after I give it away for free in black and white, I'm also going to make a bunch of, um, I'm going to print a bunch of home home copies of the black and white version, mini comics, folded over eight and a half by 11 comics to give away at conventions and whatnot when those open back up again next year. If they open up again next year, I've been uh, in contact with several um, convention promoters talking about the possibility of exhibiting had some shows. If you guys are regular listeners of this live stream, you know that I've been talking about that incessantly. My hands cranked up. Fuck. I've been talking about that incessantly um, for the past uh, few months, most of the year. The plan is to uh, hit conventions hard next year and do it in a way that uh, puts a lot of um, promotional, free promotional material out there to get our to get the Strangeville Comics brand really um, taken off, fired up, and also um, the return of the Hack Movies DVDs for sale at conventions in brand new, uh, professionally pressed, shrink wrapped. Uh, DVDs for the first time ever. All right, this one is this guy. They all have like fat fucking whiskey noses, and this guy has is all wall eyed. They're crackhead. They're homeless crackheads, man. You know, what the fuck? They ain't pretty fellas. Um, so yeah, I've been talking to uh, some convention promoters. The, the, the big obstacle, the big hurdle that I have to overcome is that most of the 2020 vendors um, had their shows canceled on them this year and carried over their tables to whenever the conventions open back up again, which means the 2021 shows are mostly sold out for exhibition tables. So what I'm having going to have to do is I'm going to have to wiggle my way back in on waiting lists and shit and just take the scraps that they're willing to, to throw at me, the couple of shows that are willing to have uh, mercy on all Kevin Strange. And allow us to, uh, you know, hopefully sneak in the, you know, sneak up on that waiting list. And get in them shows. And I have other tactics, too, if I can't get into a show I, I really, really like. Um, with a table, I can do... I've got a couple of moves I can do that I've done in the past. One move is to hit up a homie who has a table and offer to pay for half of it to put my stuff down. That is... Uh, Not something I'm I'm super interested in doing now because I have just so fucking many. Uh, movies and books and comics and games uh, that I want to put out on a table and a half a little half table job just 
ain't gonna get the fucking ain't gonna get it done. In any meaningful way, and I've done that in the past, and I have, um, you know, mixed mixed results. Uh, oftentimes, I feel really bad for the uh, people that I I buy half the table off of because the Strangeville stuff tends to dominate anywhere we put it because of how um, in your face and crazy it is, and my own uh, <clears throat> promotional tactics, the things that I'm, uh, the things that I do. to promote kind of overshadows whoever I'm uh, partnering with. <clears throat> and, uh, I don't really want to do that. The other tactic I have, and I've done this many, many times, is I will buy a weekend pass for me and, say, three or four other people. <clears throat> and uh, we will uh, just head down on a Saturday. You know, the shows are Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so me and three or four other people will boogie boogie over to a show, buy a weekend or buy a day pass. Rather, I, I keep saying week. I don't know if I I don't know if I have said weekend pass. I think I have been saying weekend pass. Buy a day pass, a one day pass. Normally the day passes for a con, like a Saturday day pass, usually only about twenty bucks. So it's not a big expenditure, especially because we're not going to be staying the night. We're going to turn around and drive back home on a Saturday. Um. It's pretty cheap to just buy a few day passes and then uh, go around and promote like fucking crazy all day Saturday from typically shows open around 11 a.m. on Saturdays. Just fucking go crazy. Bring hundreds and hundreds of promo items. Um hundreds and hundreds of promo items and just spend all Saturday hitting up everybody. And Saturday is always the biggest, most crowded day uh, for conventions. So you can conceivably put promo product into the hands of uh, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 people if you, if you bring enough. Obviously, I don't bring that many. I only bring the most I, br I bring to a show is between uh, 500 and 1,000. <laughs> That's my norm for promo items. So in this instance, it would be I'd print up uh, like 1,000. 
mini comics, mini black and white comics here at my house on my home printer. Probably break it in the process, have to buy another one. But my little cheap printer only cost me 35 bucks. So if I go through a couple of uh, cheap Walmart printers, who cares? That's what you do. Um, so the idea would be we would we would boogie down on a Saturday with 500 or a thousand promo comics and hang out at the show and give shit away. <clears throat> All day. And the show goes from about 11 a.m. to about 7 p.m. So whatever city we're in, we'll we'll roll into town around noonish, buy our tickets, go inside, spend all fucking day promoting, you know, take breaks, eat lunch, go back, hand more out, hand more out, empty our fucking backpacks um, with promo. And uh, and then boogie out of town around seven o'clock that night. And our job will be done. And w that doesn't necessarily mean people are going to be like, "Oh shit, I'm going to go on the internet and buy, pr uh, you know, buy movies or or comic books or." Uh, or novels from these people that, you know, promoted to me um, on the floor of this convention on this random Saturday. But what it does is, and, it, and this has been proven true over and over and over again, because I've been doing this for years, that whatever we promote to people, say we're in Indianapolis and we go and we heavily promo at an Indiana, Indianapolis convention in May. If there's another convention that takes place in Indianapolis in say August or September, and we go back and uh, and actually do have an exhibition table at that uh, in in that city. Uh, people will respond far better. Like we'll already have um, name recognition. They'll be like, "Oh yeah, I saw you guys last. Uh, you know, I saw you guys earlier this year. Yeah, I ended up checking that thing out you gave me. That's pretty fucking cool. You know, what do you guys?" have uh, for sale. And uh, and then we are able to capitalize on that city um, without having had even had a table earlier in the year. It's I guess it's kind of like the long game promotional tactics where you just hit a city over and over and over and over again with your promo. And, uh, and that name recognition will set in. I mean, we, we had big... Ten years ago, we had big, big, big name recognition in Indianapolis, in Chicago, in St. Louis, in um, Louisville, Kentucky, in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, those are just some of the big cities that uh, we did really well at and um, had that strong name recognition both for uh, the movies, you know, as, uh, as hack movies, and then, and then with the novels later on. Um, who gives him the crack? Guess it doesn't matter who gives them the crack. One of these fucking weirdos. One of these fucking crackheads hands him a crack pipe. Let me look at the script anyway. Let's see which one it is. Here we go. 
okay. I've got it as okay. Crackhead Bill. So the goal, the goal is to uh, get back out there and create the same kind of um, enthusiasm for the uh, Strangeville comic books. Which I don't think will be hard because these things are fucking cool and funny and offensive and obnoxious. I'm going to put together a strong team of cats. <clears throat> that are going to come out with me. And we're going to start doing something that we haven't really necessarily done in the past. Just loosely, but never with any um, truly organized plan to do it. But we're going to start recruiting locally. So we're actually going to recruit people that are in the cities that we're going to travel to. Um, and we're going to hook them up with passes to the shows in exchange for helping us promote Strangeville comics and games. Movies. <clears throat> Let's see. I gotta put something in my hand and look at how my hand would be if I was handing something off. Just handing something off, it would look like this. And it would look like this. And then that's a crack pipe. Yeah, my hands crack it again. Ugh. Fuck. <clears throat> We're going to start recruiting locally. So that every time we roll into a city, we've got help right there, ready to go. And then I'm, gonna, I'm not always pulling from this little small town, God, my fucking hand, uh, that I live in, and the St. Louis area. Uh, that's always worked in the past, but. Having people in their own cities, helping us out is going to be, I just think it's going to work smoother. It's going to go smoother. Being able to bring maybe one, one person or even nobody from the local area and rolling out to a show and then uh, having, having help right there on hand is going to be a, a game changer.
fucking hand is on fire. What happens when you draw nonstop for fucking days on end? First, your uh, your hands are little weak bitches that can't that have no uh, stamina. And then over time, they uh, they build back up, and you can sit here and draw all fucking day and all fucking night, and you barely even notice. Right now, my hands on fucking fire. Fuck. All right, that uh, that wraps up page whatever the fuck fourteen is done. The crackheads decide they're going to try to get uh, Rocco high on crack. They offer him the crack pipe, and then he takes a hit. And I wonder what happens next. Nothing good. Nothing good for these bums. If you're a if you're a uh, <laughs> if you're a side character, if you're a bit character in a Strangeville comic, if you're not one of the main characters, good luck. <laughs> bad, bad, bad things are gonna happen to you. Horrific things can happen to you. All right, so that's page 14. That I believe that officially puts us at five pages for the day. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I think it's seven total on this scene that's done. And I did, uh, let's see, I did three of them last night. So that's technically that's only my third page of the day. But since I had no intention of even getting any pages done yesterday, the fact that I have, because I was doing all the layouts yesterday, one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> I've actually got six pro uh, finished pages done. And I was only, my goal today was only going to be to do five of them. So I'm already one page ahead, and total pages left in the scene is one, two, three, four, five. I only have five pages left in the scene. That's tomorrow's work. I want to have all of this, what's in my hand, these um, layout pages. I want to have all five of these layout pages done by tomorrow night. So I'm pretty far ahead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to I'm going to try to do at least two of these two. These are pretty pretty small. I mean, this is a three panel page and this is a splash page. Um, a little spoiler, a little spoilery if you can see what's happening in these. And these uh, roughed out shots. <laughs> What's happening to these poor bums? But anyway, uh, I'm going to try to jump. Oh, yeah, 16, 17, yeah. I'm going to try to jump ahead and get at least two more done uh, tonight. And then that would leave for tomorrow's job, I would only need to do one, two, three pages, and then I can start laying out the 10 pages for 
scene three, the final scene. So my guess is I'll have going into Friday night, by the end of Friday night, I'll have laid out all of scene three. And then Saturday morning, we can start penciling scene three, hard pencils like this. And then Sunday, we will finish up the pencils. And going into Monday, a week's week's worth of work, we'll be starting the digital inking on December 7th. That's a good place to be, gang. We'll see if we can get there. That's the goal. See how far we get. Thanks for hanging out with me. These are like, uh, I say this all the time, these are like the audio commentaries of comic books. You guys actually getting me, getting to uh, watch the process with me as I build them from blank pages all the way up to, you know, finished uh, finished comic books. If you ever wondered how, how old Kevin Strange makes his comics, it's fucking this hand and this blank paper. That's it. <clears throat> it's that. That's simple. And this... 0.9 lead um, mechanical pencil. So until tomorrow again, like I said, I'm going to try to bust out two more pages tonight, see where we get. Heading into day four. I'll uh, holler at you guys tomorrow, and we'll see where we get. Try to come. I'll try to come a lot earlier. I didn't get anybody in here doing uh, comments. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, most likely, you guys are uh, busy, um, just getting off work, getting dinner prepared, and everything. You're not in here chit chatting with me. We do most of our shows in the morning. My morning crowd is to come in and hang out and talk with us. But uh, hit that like button. Drop a comment into the video, even if it, you're not watching this live, even if you're watching this um, later. Drop a comment in, say what's up, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Remember, stay.